The All Do Cube iPlay Mini 50 Pro. Can it do it all and is it pro? Well, let's find out. It's got a similar system on chip to the Doogee tablets and phones that we've been looking at. It's the G99 from MediaTek. From some of the videos I've seen on it already, the, that storage isn't the fastest. So probably that borrowed extra RAM isn't gonna be the very, very best. It does come with a screen protector, pre-installed. So let's just make sure I'm just peeling off the top layer rather than the screen protector itself. There you are. So it's an 8.4 inch IPS 1920 by 1200 pixels screen. It does come with 4G LTE and it's got a dual SIM. Well, I'll test out whether that works in the UK as well. What do you get in this box? The legal information. They've included the stylus and a set of headphones and an OTG converter for USB and USB A to C cable and a power adapter conveniently for the United States. Although it does say on the website, I noticed that they will include the right one for your region. I just got unlucky. Good to have when traveling. So not a bad set of things to get with the tablet. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is not massive for something of this size. They say nine hours, but we'll see. I imagine it'll be less than that with my normal usage. I'm gonna skip the mobile network for now. I'll do that later. The keyboard, first impressions of that. It does have a little bit of haptic feedback, not quite as good as what you expect from a Samsung or whatever, but it's okay. This will just sit and do its setup for a moment as well. It does also include GPS, 18 watt, fast charging which is not super fast it looks fine it is sort of you know it's that massive sort of phablet size that we're kind of used to and i guess you could kind of use it as a phone it does also have a headphone jack which is weirdly placed here in the corner and there's a micro sd card but only up to 512 gigabytes so that's probably all right for most people though we've only got one speaker so there's no sort of stereo sound from this but obviously you get stereo sound i guess from the headphone jack there this, remember, throughout this entire first look and when I do do a full review of it, this is £135 on AliExpress. You can't seem to get it in many other places. I mean, wow, this is inexpensive tech. Although I think I have the bundle which includes the keyboard case and a case. So, well, it's not a keyboard case, it's just a keyboard. This is an unbranded, it's nothing to do with all do cube itself. This is just an inexpensive Bluetooth keyboard. Doesn't look too bad though. It's got a fair bit of travel for an inexpensive keyboard and it's got not got that absolutely hollow click, although it's nothing like a mechanical keyboard. And it's got the case in this bundle. These are sort of just, I think this is like $10 extra if you want to get the case with it. Although as you'd expect, it's already discounted, but you'll probably find it discounted during the kind of lifespan of this device. Let's have a little closer look at the back of it before I put it in this case. You know, it's not as thin as many tablets will be, but it is, I've seen thicker. It's got the little plastic bits so that it can be an aerial as well as this sort of, I think it's all plastic to be honest. For some reason it didn't work to restore it from one of my old devices there, which was odd. The pin didn't seem to work. So basically it's cheap, but is it good value? It does run Android 13 though, which is an interesting thing to see. Perhaps some of the ink tablet boys should look into using this MediaTek G99 chip because people seem to be able to put it out for incredibly low prices and it is allowing Android 13, which is constantly being leveled at books, etc., as a criticism. So I'm gonna install a couple of apps and have a quick look today, and then I'll be back with my full thoughts. I'll pop it into its case, why not? Very standard. Protective case, nothing wrong with that though. It's okay, this screen, I mean, it's not too bad at all. Let's have a little look. This is its brightest, and its least bright. Somewhere in the middle, I think it's got auto brightness. I'll turn the Bluetooth on and hook up a keyboard. Okay, so it seems to do just what it says it does. It seems to perform as expected. It's an Android tablet. It can do all the Android tablet things, I'm sure. And scrolling is just fine. I'm not sure what the refresh rate on the screen is. I'm guessing it's just a 60 hertz screen refresh. Occasional flicker. Can you see that on the screen? You probably can't see it, but there is occasional when that drag 
it's occasionally not quite keeping up but it's fine that sound is pretty poor okay that's just one speaker it's pretty tinny but you know there we are i struggle to personally see a need for this exactly this size but hang on a minute it might be quite a good screen size for my teleprompter actually so maybe i will use it for that so if you are looking for a tablet of this size if that is fits in with your life if there's a gap in your tech combo for a tablet of this size then yeah it does what it says it does and it's great to see you can get such good performance for so very cheap i think perhaps though as a little browser that maybe you leave in your living room or something a bit bigger than your phone with a convenient headphone jack for watching a bit of youtube around the house or maybe even on a commute pretty good as usual though you get a very reflective green protector i can just try and catch an image there yeah so in bright sunlight it's going to be pretty annoying to be honest and i think it's 300 nits of brightness which isn't very bright at all and isn't going to combat any of the glare that you get from the sun it is very odd the way that goes in there look but that's how it does see how the uh, old school look exactly like iphone earbuds used to look there's no printed l or r on there though i mean that's okay it's not bad at all it's just as you'd expect it to be to be honest all right i'll be back uh, with some thoughts on this after a while we'll just test out the camera quickly doesn't seem to want to focus that close. There we go. Yeah, that's an acceptable camera. It's pretty detailed. I think it's 12 megapixel rear and 5 megapixel front. Screen's nice though. I mean, that is a nice and detailed IPS screen. It just shows you how good the screens that are coming off these factories are at the moment. One last thing, bit of a word of warning really. Don't expect any of these very, very cheap styluses to do any good. Go ahead and download Sketchbook. Because this type of stylus is just imitating a finger touch, essentially it is not. It's not actually got any pressure levels, it's not actually got any EMR communication with the screen. All it has is the same capacitative touch, <laughs> as you can see you are just gonna get no joy out of that for drawing in the slightest bit. So in my opinion, it's got gonna be no tilt, there's no pressure. I'm not even gonna test it for drawing to be honest, I just wouldn't recommend it. And don't go for the bundle with the stylus in because the stylus is worth pennies, not pounds. Okay, thanks for watching.